I'm out here living dope. I'm out here living dope. <laughs> Hello. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Oh, um, you know, just the longest day ever. And then having to record this podcast after is actually going to fucking kill me. But here we go. Here we go. We Episode should two. start with introducing ourselves yeah, this time. Okay, go. Okay. Hi, I'm Mick. I'm Colin. Um, welcome to the second episode of the Inbetweens podcast. Yep. <laughs> this is our second time recording it. I'm just gonna yeah. get, I'm gonna clear no, the air right now. We were, <laughs> <laughs> no, like it's bad, y'all. We were having a sophomore slump last night. Truly, we spent an hour record more than an hour recording. Yeah. There was over half the episode was just us staring Silence. at each other. Trying there was to one come point where Mick something. said, "What did you say? You said I don't know what life is." Or and I said, I, "Life doesn't feel real." And I said, no, "Yeah, really? no, no, really." Eight seconds of silence <laughs> after. <laughs> And then she told a story about explaining to me Tumblr, and I like you can just see me like, no, not not a thought behind my eyes, not I was, a single thought. I was talking, and I was watching his face the whole time I was talking, and I was like, not he's not absorbing a single word of this. <laughs> I really wasn't, and, and it's you know we blamed it on the headphones, and so we again are not wearing headphones. We're not wearing today. headphones. So if the audio is messed up again, it's. <laughs> It's because our energy was it's because dead. The, the when headphones we had literally headphones. sucked the life out of us. It did. Um, but See, also, but we were wearing headphones because we received yeah. some feedback um, about the first episode. We received some feedback about the volume of the mics. Let me um, <laughs> let me read them. Um, this is from anonymous tip. All right, here we go. Your podcast has me laughing, laughing, laugh. But your mic is so quiet compared to Michaela's. There's no H in Michaela either. <laughs> Just, I love that. Let me point that out. What a creative choice. Like she's. Screaming at me compared to you. She's like a televangelist trying to sell me a blender so I go to heaven. It's so loud, but you're whispering even quieter than Miss Whisperlina Gomez. Like her song Hands to Myself is louder than you. That's my feedback. I'm so sorry, Anonymous Tipster. Um, <laughs> so this time we have Mick a little bit placed further behind I'm the mic. Trying to, I'm trying to stay back in my chair. And I'm going to come a little bit forward because I think y'all wanted more of me. Right, and less of me. <laughs> Anyways, this is episode two. Let's get this into it. This is episode it. two. Let's start with some <laughs> pop culture. Okay, so let's see what's happened in the past week. Um, have you heard the stuff about the Claro concerts? No. Are you, are you actually haven't? No. Okay, so people are annoying at concerts. We all know that. Sure. Like, when I'm at a concert, okay, I'm singing, but like, <laughs> I'm singing to a volume to where it's like, it's not annoying. Right. Like, I'm not screaming it, but like, I'm like... Singing along. This is a good example. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm singing along with the artist, but like I'm not like overpowering the artist. Right. And so I don't know if Claro's just like an introverted, shy performer in general, but like people have been screaming at her during her concerts, oh. like like really screaming and like people are screaming like sexual things at her, like they're so hot, blah blah blah, after she just performed a song about her being sexually assaulted or sexually oh, harassed. No. Um, and like, you can just see it in her face that she's uncomfortable Yeah. and it's like, it's like, it's gone viral on TikTok and Twitter and pe- some people are like, it's a concert. What do you expect people to do? But like, respect the respect artist. Respect the artist. Like, so like, it's been a whole thing on, on Twitter about people talking about it. I feel like concerts are supposed to be like, their concerts are very intimate. Like it's supposed to be like a moment between you and the artist. Like it's not just like, I mean, I guess it is for some people. Like if you don't care as much about the artist, yeah. like you're just going for the songs, but like some people, I feel like just people, go for the aesthetic and yeah. that's annoying. But for most people, it like for the artists, it's supposed to be like them sharing their art with people that relate yeah. to it and that, that like, uh, want to experience that moment with them. So to have that ruined by people that are like disregarding the meanings of like the songs and like the feelings of the artists is like, they obviously aren't like actual fans actual of fans, the music like, cause you would respect the artist. No, like I went were. to a concert a couple years ago and like the artist before she like started playing the piano, um, like said like, this is like a heavier song. Like I have, like it's unreleased. Like I just like want y'all to listen to this without like talking or screaming and yeah. like people still did it. Like, and I'm like, come on. Anyways, that's been happening in the Claro world. What did she say something about it? Or is no, it just like on you can Twitter? Just see, well, like, it's just on Twitter, but, like, you can see her expressions when people are doing it. And oh, she even says something sad. like, can y'all please be quiet? Like, and, like, people still do it. But oh, that makes me sad. That's Claro news. <laughs> Anything for me? Well, I was just going to talk about the Batman. I just, uh, I just wanted to say that I love that Miss Swift came out of her cave just to <laughs> praise Miss Zoe Kravitz. Yeah. Zoe? Yeah, Zoe. Isn't that right? Zoe. <gasps> okay. Did you know she's a nepotism baby? Who? Who? I don't know. Is, but I, is I saw a tweet about her owning her nepotism, and, and someone was like, people need to do this is more Is Lenny often. Kravitz her, like, <laughs> I don't know who Lenny Kravitz is. This is. If this is wrong, I'm going to be so embarrassed. I think it's Sinner in The Hunger Games. I think that's Lenny Kravitz. The costume designer guy? Mm-hmm. In the first movie. 
Oh, I thought yeah, you, oh. it is. Zoe Kravitz is the only daughter of famous exes Lisa Bonet and Lenny Kravitz. Lenny Kravitz is old enough to be Zoe Kravitz's father. Is it? Isn't Zoe Kravitz in her twenties? Zoe Kravitz is thirty-three. Lenny is fifty-seven. Okay, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Whoa, I had no idea. Fun fact about Zoe Kravitz: Did you know she's recording an album with Jack? Jack Antonoff. Yeah. Oh my god. Did you not know that? I feel like I remember seeing it, but it didn't no, like, register. She posted something about it, like, maybe, oh, like, kind of a while back, and then, like, recently stuff has been coming back up, but, like, something's brewing with oh, Jack Antonoff okay. and Zoe Kravitz. Jack never misses. No, like, he, he finds the girlies and pulls them in. Oh, I love this for me. <laughs> wait, speaking of, oh, wait, that's one thing, that's what I was going to say when we were talking about concerts. When we went to the Bleachers concert... My, one of my favorite songs of all time is Wake Me by yeah. Bleachers. And when they were performing it, like, absolutely scream the song if you love it. I love that yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah. But the girls right behind <laughs> us were yeah. screaming. And I was like, I'm just trying to vibe. <laughs> See, concerts are such a hit or miss for me because, like, I hate loud noises. Yeah, well. <laughs> the anxiety that happens when an artist is about to come out and, like, people start, like, screaming. I'm me, like. sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> No, like, I can't do that. Like, something in it, like, really triggers me. I guess that makes sense, but maybe concerts would not be the best place to go if you don't love loud I mean, I, I guess, but, like, I like I like the intimate moment with, oh, with an artist. Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. Okay, but back to Batman. Oh, yes, Batman. Um, we haven't seen it yet. No, we haven't. But you know what? I, people were talking about it at school today, and, the, and someone was like, oh, it's so bad. And then the person next to me was like, no, it's really good. And I'm like, what do I believe? But anyways, I've I heard think, it's good. I think I'll like it. I've I think I will like it, too considering actually considering what i don't like superhero movies i mean it looks like if if you were gonna like any superhero movie i feel like well you like the batman begins trilogy right? oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. But that's christopher nolan so like i trust what he did with it but like any other like just mainstream superhero movie i usually don't like but i am excited for this yeah this looks maybe like, it's because of robert pattinson though you know they're doing something with their marketing oh no have you seen the like the wonderland i think it's wonderland yes. like photo shoots with zoe kravitz mm-hmm. and yeah they're doing something yes they took a page out of oscar isaac and Jessica no they Chastain's did it's so sexual for scenes from a marriage and i love that for them because no. you know what it's drawing me in no it's drawing me in and I'm it's, like, it's I drawing in because it's doing good in the box office yeah like are theaters alive again i kind of think they are i think they just are alive for superhero movies but um we'll I, see i mean i other types of movies are, are still drawing people in. Well, Uncharted did de- decently. Yeah. But I think it's maybe just because of Mr. Tom Holland and Zendaya. Well, <laughs> that and the fact that it already had, like, Uncharted already, which I didn't know this until I watched an interview of Tom Holland's recently. Uncharted is, it was a video game. So it had a huge oh, fan base to begin with because it started as a video game. Oh, it's giving Pokemon. Sure. <laughs> Remember when you made me watch De- Detective Pikachu? I mean, Detective Pikachu is a five star <laughs> film. <laughs> I liked it. I'm not gonna it lie. It was cute. I, I did enjoy it. Um, but yeah, we will see the Batman and maybe report on it next week. Yes. Because we I hate. I'm the kind of person that if a movie comes out, I want to be the first to see it. Oh, absolutely. And like my letterbox is full of people who have already seen it. Like everyone at school has already seen. It. They all saw it together. I feel like. Oh, and they didn't invite you. <laughs> I'm always busy this weekend. We will get to that. Booked you're right, and you're busy. Right, you're right. You're right. We were booked um, and busy. But like I'm the kind of person that wants to have the first opinion on a movie. Right. So we got to go immediately. For me, it's less that I want to have the first opinion. It's that I want to know what everyone's talking about. Oh, well, that my, too. I want to be in on the jokes. It's my entire Twitter timeline. Oh, well, right that, that too. There's so many like insiders with like scenes with Robert and I'm like hmm. yeah like people are like I don't know they're just they're just yeah. throwing a bunch of jokes out there and I'm like I would it's like giving to know. <laughs> pre-SAT Twitter when you when you would get when you would get online right after you took a big test that everyone in the state took <laughs> yeah and, and everyone was talking about it uh, and you're like oh I know what that means the thrill of that <laughs> Bring it back, honestly. No, literally. Give me give me that again. I want to feel alive. <laughs> I'll be on the bus on Twitter. Like, um, But yeah, I just want to be a part of the conversation with the Batman movie. Yeah. But well, also, you know what conversation we were a part of? The Euphoria finale. Oh, we were. But let me say one thing before oh, okay. we move on to Euphoria. Is that $16 Batman tickets ah, kill me. I think me. it's going to be more than that. Well, did you see that AMC is trying this thing where... They put like higher like movies like the Batman. The tickets cost more for to go see those versus like, um, like indie movies. Like the the tickets would be cheaper. I guess that makes sense in a way as like like a way to try and get people in to see like because like to see both kind of because like, people are gonna go to see those people are gonna movies. see the superhero movies regardless. But like the indie movies, like sometimes if somebody would look up a ticket and see that it's sixteen dollars, they might be like. Us. No, like I'm, <laughs> literally I can't, us. I can't do that. So it's kind of like an entice, like a um, a way to entice people into yeah, watch yeah. like all all the movies that they might be interested in. Yeah, you know? completely. Um, 
But we did watch the Euphoria finale. We did. And we were underwhelmed. Yeah. Um, this season was all over the place. Like, I love Mr. Sam Levinson. Sure. You know, I saw a tweet that was like, get Sam Levinson out of the writer's room, but let him keep the camera. Let him keep the camera. <laughs> absolutely let him keep the camera. <laughs> because the shots he does are, are absolutely oh, stunning. The show is beautiful. Uh, but oh, the, writing... the show is incredible. The writing needed Maybe help this lacking. season. And you know what? Because I thought because it took so long to make, like, what, came on 2019, three years? Like, mm-hmm. I was, how old was I? I was, I was... I was in, how old was I? <laughs> Wait, I was 19. I'm not I was 20. Sure. I, was, I was three years ago. Anyways, yes. <laughs> me always trying to figure out my age in my head sometimes because I feel like I tell people I'm 23 knowingly being 22. I anyways. still say 21 and I just turned 23. Yeah, so. you did. <laughs> <laughs> but like it took so many years to develop and yet it was still like so underwhelming. There were a lot, like I just feel like a lot of the Plot like storylines were like chaotic all over the place. They were unfinished. Completely. Like, I don't know. I just expected a lot more. Yeah, I, I mean the the only thing I will give it credit to is for episode five. Like, oh, Miss Zendaya. Zendaya was in her Oscars bag. She was. She was eating it right up. Like, holy shit! Like when I saw stuff that episode five was gonna be good, like I didn't know it was gonna be that yeah. good. Yeah. And like when we started, I remember just being, I was in it. Oh, I was in it. Like I was invested from the second it started until the second it finished. So like episode five. Peak. Peak. Everything else. Eh. Except for Sydney Sweeney, my queen, Miss Miss Donut. Miss Donut. <laughs> <laughs> um, she ate this season. She, she did. She served. But it just like it like I just wish that like he, he would have given her more to work with. Oh yeah. Um, just like I wish that like he would have given Cat more to oh, work just with. Cat so just many did characters. not exist. Um, but we'll be reviewing Euphoria season three in twenty twenty four on this podcast <laughs> <laughs> because that's how long it will take to get another Anything. season. But 2024. But circling back to tickets for the Batman, we were mm-hmm. gonna see it mm-hmm. on Thursday mm-hmm. night, but we were broke after this weekend. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. It was my birthday this weekend. It was her birthday. Was 23. Um, everybody hates when you were 23. You didn't even know that was a song. I'm actually so embarrassed that I was like, "What's that from?" Because I used to. That used to be a, one of my pillars of my oh, personality that I constructed um, when Based I wanted other to people? be when I wanted to be a punk, like when I wanted to be punk, like when I was also listening to Nirvana and like that kind of thing. What? Like I was Where like, give, Nirvana me, give me, give me Blink 182 as oh, well. Yeah. yeah. So I'm kind of embarrassed that I was like, "What's that from?" No, I'm kind of surprised you didn't because like that's that's giving you. But yeah, we were broke after we were booked and busy this weekend and broke. Yeah, booked, three busy, of broke. my friends came in from out of town. And um, you know what? When people are in town, we just spend too much money. Like, but there's there's not really an option. Like you have to I mean, like, like be out and about. Oh yeah, like there was one point when I wanted to come home when it, the day was super windy, but like you can't. Like you, you have can't. to do stuff. You like, have to go spend money. Like literally, like um, two of my friends that came, uh, hi Kat and Maddie, um, they were only here for one full day. Like they came Friday yeah. morning and they left Sunday afternoon, so we only had Saturday and. And of course, Saturday was the day when there were forty mile per hour winds on the beach where I wanted to have a picnic. Yeah, no, that wasn't that wasn't happening. It literally, was literally tragic. Literally a sand tsunami. <laughs> I pulled up. I paid for parking. Is a sand tsunami a thing? No, sand tornado. <gasps> sand storm. I guess I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure actually. Sand tsunami. <laughs> it's because it's because we were talking about tsunamis yeah, yesterday. Okay, I'll, I'll forgive you for that. I'll forgive you for that. <laughs> um, but yeah, the wind forty miles per hour. Like I have this argument with myself all the time. It's like, would I rather be super cold or super hot? And anytime I'm like normally like my, my normal body temperature, I'm like, uh, I'd rather be super cold than super hot. Mm-hmm. But when it was super windy and cold, I was like, fuck this. <laughs> but I think cold is where I stand. I would rather be cold, but wind is the worst. Oh yeah. We literally parked and. We got out of the car immediately. The wind whipped my hat off yeah. my head. The parking <laughs> ticket that I'd put in my dashboard flew out. Cat had to go run and grab it. Well, the fact that we went to, we like, we were waiting to go eat at a cafe. And by the time the cafe <laughs> was like, okay, we have a table for you. We sat down. They menus put, blew. They seated us outside. <laughs> and like, we've gone there twice now and we haven't been able to sit, eat there. The first time the wait was too long. This time we, we waited. We waited. And, and then and they then, seated us outside in 40 mile per hour wind conditions. We, it's probably a good thing we didn't because when we sat down, I, I, I was like, crispy chicken sandwich sounds good. $21. Yeah, I should start looking at the dollar And I think signs. I spent over 300 Oh, I, I, def- I definitely spent over three hundred dollars. Okay, so I got my. Uh, mm, ooh. <laughs> okay, Colin so first purchased something. <laughs> I purchased something that was over two hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Did I beg other people for money? Yes. Did they send it to you? Yes. I was so surprised when you started receiving payments. I was like, wait, does that actually work? Do I need to start doing that? Well, like I feel like my homies will always send me money. <laughs> I don't know if I can count on my homies in the same way. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I would. Not send- for a. I would have sent you money for a bleep. Oh, I know. You would have been the one person that I would ask. Because I encourage you getting bleeps. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Absolutely. (laughs) The bleep is a tattoo. (laughs) 
<laughs> it sounded suspicious otherwise. It kind of did. That's why I had to let them know. <laughs> but yeah, tattoos are so freaking expensive they here. They really are. Back in Texas, where we're from, I could get like the shop minimum at some places were like was like $40, 50 dollars. Yeah, but here, so far, they've all been over 100 right? Well, I called one place when me and Crystal were looking for a place, and they were like, shop minimum's 250 I was like, what kind of tattoo am I getting for 250 That's yeah. a lot of money. Like, what if I was just getting a tiny little thing for 250 They're like, 250 sorry. Plus tip? Plus tip. Also, I didn't... He skimped on the tip. Let's, let's I, expose I, him right I, now. I, I honestly, <laughs> my mind wasn't thinking right, and I did skip on the tip, but don't worry, Crystal, our friend that got a tattoo... She She over She over overtipped, she so did. I think it evened out. It did, it did. Um, well... Sort of. Yeah, but anyway, we'll let you have the hook. my tattoo looks really good. <laughs> it does. It does. <laughs> um, but like on top of that, like going to eat with people all the time, like it's just so expensive. Being, we did show up at a human. Chinese restaurant where they were supposed to be open until nine. We got there at eight p.m. The door was locked, and we were like, "This is suspicious." Uh. So we started to leave, but then the man came and opened the door. He said, "You want to eat here?" And we said, "Well, yes." So he was like, come on, come on. And he let us in. And then he proceeded to turn all the lights on. Because they weren't on before. <laughs> because it was completely empty. And then sat us down and then said, the kitchen is closing. Pick, and then we got a $75 meal that wasn't even that good. And yeah. then I brought the chow mein home and then threw it away because it smelled. So, a so waste that was a waste of $75. So that was the first that day. Was the, that was the kicking it off. That was day one. So $75 <laughs> Chinese food and $200 tattoo. And the next day, we spent even more money. <laughs> and we went to the Academy Museum on Friday. We um, did. We took our friends there. And you know what? It was giving euphoria season two. It was. It was. It was underwhelming. underwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> Do I don't know what I was expecting. I don't know what I expect from any museum ever. No, yeah. Because I went to the Met in New York. Mm -hmm. I went there last time I was in New York. And like, I just don't know what I wanted from I it. I think if you're not, like, if you're not a, okay, well, I feel like it was different with the Academy, Academy Museum, but for like art museums, I feel like if you're not an art girly, like if yeah. you're not like, oh, I know a lot about this artist and this style and this yeah. era, then it's not as like exciting because you don't really know what you're looking at you're more just like oh this is pretty and like i knew that and but i was still expecting the academy museum to be more interactive especially the studio ghibli exhibit yeah i mean i don't know studio ghibli that well but like even our friends that do were like slightly underwhelmed yeah like they were it. really really excited for it and they weren't like super impressed like did they, they still... still spend three hundred dollars <laughs> in the gift shop yes yes they did they really really did also did see Will Derbyshire and Arden Rose there. They she had, had a, she had a little celebrity a little, moment. We had we had three celeb sightings on my birthday. Will and Arden, and then Mason Gooding. Oh yeah, the guy from Love Victor. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I they were like, oh my god, I think that's the guy from Love Victor, and like. And I was, the new screen I, movie. I was being cool. I was playing it off. I was like, let me go to the bathroom and see, <laughs> and I did, and we gave a little wave at each other. It was, it was. But him. I didn't talk to him because that'd be weird. No, that would definitely be weird, especially because you were in the bathroom. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, one time I followed Will Poulter in the bathroom from the guy from Midsummer. <laughs> Well, I needed to know if it was him. And then I didn't say anything in the bathroom. And then as he was leaving the restaurant, I was res restaurant. I was like, Will, like, why did I scream his name like I knew him? I don't know. Anyway, me. that's that's actually, that picture of me and Will Poulter is worse than the picture of me and Sandy Sweeney. Oh, oh no. I, I don't think I want to see it, actually. No, you. I, it, I posted it on my story, too. Like, I really thought it was something at the time. I'm sure it was very exciting. Oh, it was. It was a yeah. thrill. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it was a natural high, as oh, I, I yeah. said at the time. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, but, like, I think I just need to stop taking pictures with celebrities because every time they're tragic. I think I literally need like a photographer to come and take pictures with them. With just them be prepared. <laughs> be prepared to follow you around. every time my iPhone does me dirty. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Academy Museum, kind of a flop. Yeah. Bopper flop, flop. Flop. But on, honestly, it was only $50 because we got the student discount. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we like went every, to Melrose. We did go to Melrose. And also, speaking of Melrose, Griffith, we always go to the same places when people are here. We do. But I mean, I feel like you have to. Like, yeah. My friend Maddie has never been to LA before this yeah. weekend, and so I wanted to make sure she kind of got, you know, yeah. got a, a taste of everything. So, you know, Griffith is like up there, and the beach is over here, yes, and then, yes, you know, is. the Academy Museum's in the middle. You just driving sure, all around yes. town, you know? Um, so, like, you kind of have to just do, like, the staples if the person's never been yeah. there before. Um and I think it was it was it was worth it, like doing those oh, yeah. again. But you do have to do them every time. That's oh, and my sister's coming this weekend, and I'll be back. You will be doing it again. <laughs> I'll be back, y'all. <laughs> I'll be, be doing at the observatory if you want to see me. We but, also went out. Oh yeah. Both nights. And you know what? The thing about us is that we like familiar places. And mm -hmm. yet again, we were at in West Hollywood both nights. Both nights. Far I like a night. karaoke bar, dive bar, like quiet, quieter night. Yes, that's that's very fair. Because the first night, I felt awkward as fuck. Yeah. I like my personalities is either sometimes I can't talk 
<laughs> do we blame it on the mouth ulcers or do we think I'm I just I think you like, can blame it on the ulcers this time. Okay, thanks. I am either very social mm-hmm. or very not. Mm-hmm. And that night, I was feeling not. That's, I was that's feeling not. That's valid. Like, I, I was just that. holding the cup of ice uh-huh. and chewing on the ice. Uh-huh. As, as the rest of y'all were being swarmed because of the birthday hats. Yeah, see... <laughs> We did put on birthday memorabilia. See, that's cringy to me, and so I didn't wear one. See, I I respect that, but the only reason I wanted to is because I I wanted free drinks. Yeah. Well, how many people stopped you to say happy birthday, though? So many. No, literally, like, the first girl that told you happy birthday? Mm -hmm. Cringe. Like, she was like, happy birthday, like, it's your birthday, how do you turn in? And you were like, ah, blah, 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 and then her husband was like, I'm her husband. husband. And you were like... I literally said, congratulations! Like, what do you like, do with that information? What am I supposed to say? I, like, can't handle talking to people and, and bars that I don't know. Like, I, like, we're just... I, I don't know what to say. Yeah, I don't either. But, like, I mean, I like it, but I have to be inebriated enough yeah, to do it. Well, see, I'm <laughs> sober 24-7. Right. So Con does I not just, drink. I so, feel the cringe. Yes. And, like, the guy who came up to us was, that was talking about being on The Masked Singer, I was like... <laughs> What do I say to this man <laughs> that is telling me about how he was on The Masked Singer? Well, see, he was like, do you know The Masked Singer? And I was like, yes. Meaning, like, I had, I've seen the Wendy Williams clip of her performance from well, The Masked well, Singer. Of course you have. Of course. When she was dressed as the big lips. But that's all I've seen. <laughs> Not the pair of big lips. <laughs> that's all I've seen of The Masked Singer. Not the lip pumper. <laughs> that's all I know. And so he proceeded, he was like, when I was like, oh yeah, I know The Masked Singer. He moved around mm-hmm. the table I think he closer. like thought that like you knew the mass singer I, I didn't I didn't you know what I see billboards for the mass singer all the time or like around school and it's kind of terrifying oh I'm sure to say the least but yeah he moved around the table and got closer to me and was like I was this and I was like girl I have absolutely no idea what that means I I, I I've never seen a full episode of this show before no I mean mean that I have no idea what what goes on in the mass singer except for Wendy except Williams. for that like the judges are maybe like guessing and there's maybe a walkout at one point because of a contestant so anything but that but otherwise people in bars scare me like right. the guy that was trying to hit on me that you were like you mm. were like I was like I think he's occupied I had to I had to occupy myself y'all <laughs> I had to get out of there. And then he's, the man in the cowboy hat slapped the drink out of my hand. But honestly, it was probably good for you because if you would have finished that, that drink, drink, it would have been over for you. Because she was already, <laughs> by the t- like, driving home, she was about to throw up. And she was kept sal- salivating. Stop and she collected the spit in her mouth and spit it out the window. And it flew back on the window behind. And, and Kristen our friend goes, Kristen was like, it's, it's raining. raining! And we were like, no, it's mixed spit. But you know what? I didn't throw up. And that's she all didn't. that matters. She didn't. All I, she was just got fries thrown at her by me later in the See, night. I went to bed um, before Colin and Crystal went to go search for McDonald's. You know what? You always have to have McDonald's or something after oh, a night out. In Texas, it's Whata. But here... I don't like the way you said that. In Texas, it's Whataburger. But I here, still don't like the way you say it. What? Whataburger? Like, let's debrief that. Whataburger. Whataburger? No, you're pronouncing the H too much. Whataburger? No, wait. No, no like, that was way too much. It's Whataburger. Whataburger. No. <laughs> water burger, like you're almost. Said, you're saying water burger. I know, like almost say water burger, but don't. What a burger. No, <laughs> you're bothering me with your H's. Isn't it like what a burger? Yeah, what a burger. What a burger. Sure. <laughs> I'm confused. Sure. What am I Anyways. doing wrong? <laughs> oh, but before we move on from going out um, this weekend, I would like to say that there's a bar that we went to that we've gone to a couple times now that has a bakery in the mm-hmm. middle of it. Has coconut. Cake. Yes, coconut okay. cake. Is it thirteen dollars a slice? Yes, it is. It was fifteen dollars on New Year's. Okay, anything but that. Did we circle back when <laughs> our friend Crystal was throwing up incapacitated. everywhere? Incapacitated. Colin escorted her to her the car. To the car <laughs> she and... was. We were sitting on the sidewalk. She was throwing up on the sidewalk. People were passing. They said, is she okay? And they were going to get the coconut cake. <laughs> and we doubled back to the coconut cake. But Kat you know said, it it's worth your it. birthday. You need the coconut cake. And I said, you know what? Crystal will be fine. (laughs) She wasn't. She was like, can they Uber home? I was like, no, we need the coconut cake, Queens. (laughs) And we we, got the coconut cake. We got the coconut cake. We did get the coconut cake. And we made it home. Yeah, it was all And that's all that matters. (laughs) Anyways, we need to try different places to go out. We do. Because I want to experience some different places here besides West Hollywood. It's just, okay. Well, we tried to go to a different place that one of my friends recommended. And we got there and it was completely dark. And so I let Mick out to go see like what the situation was. I looked like such an idiot hobbling down the street <laughs> in my little <laughs> birthday sash. <laughs> the fact that you had a birthday sash on. What were you thinking? I wanted free drinks. 
drinks. Uh, I'll say it again. I wanted free drinks, and I own that. I own that for myself. <laughs> you look like a little loser with the birthday sash <laughs> Everyone on. Everyone guessed that I was turning 21. No, it was giving, like, 19. <laughs> You were giving 19-year-old, like, underage, trying to get in bars to get drinks. By wearing a birthday sash? I don't know anyone that wears a birthday sash that's, like, un- over the age of 20. Should Is this something I should be embarrassed about? <laughs> definitely. I'm glad. <laughs> birthday sash. <laughs> the birthday sash is definitely something you should be embarrassed about. And that's all I'm, that's all I'm going to say about that. The thing is, like, I would be, except for the fact that I did get free drinks. I will not be wearing a birthday sash in a month when my birthday comes, so and, don't get me one. And I respect that for you. You know what? Out of Can the, I give you a little birthday pin? No, because I don't want people flocking me at the bars. You know what? We're not even going out for my birthday. That's fair. That is so fair. <laughs> We're going to a karaoke bar, because that's what I want. I love that. Because that's me. I, I was going to say, I love a karaoke bar. Like, I love a dive bar, like, low-key situation. But I was like, people are in from out of town. It's an occasion. It's my birthday. Yeah. Like we gotta, we gotta. You go. wanted, you wanted a, you wanted a night. I wanted a night because I haven't, I haven't really gone out since moving here. No, you've here. gone out twice since moving so here. So I wanted You're to lame. go out. I wanted to go out and I wanted to have a good time, and we did. Yeah, it we was did. Fun. We had a good weekend. Yeah, it was fun. Okay, I think we should, I think we should do the lightning questions. Okay. Do you yes. Wanna, do you want a segue? Sure. Okay, so we're gonna do a little lightning round, get to know you question thing. Just we're just gonna both ask each other three questions. We don't know the questions. We we want to do this to like introduce ourselves a little bit, give a little bit more context to who we are, um, and thus a lightning round hot seat. Okay, first question for you: What is the most embarrassing thing that has happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> the way okay. I already know the answer, but I just wanted okay. you to tell the story. Here's again. the thing. My entire life is an embarrassing story. Oh, yeah, completely. So, Your there's, comedy. There's, <laughs> there's two genres of embarrassing stories that I have. Okay, there's what, humiliating what embarrassing, and there's like, oh my God, that's so funny. I will be telling an, oh my God, that's so funny embarrassing story, because the humiliating ones will never see the light of day ever again, okay? If it's not the story that I'm thinking it's going to be, we are also telling that story. <laughs> okay. Okay, <laughs> okay go. Um, so, <clears throat> I've had many a job in my life. Um, you have. You've had a lot of little I've jobs. Had a lot of little jobs. Um, and at one point I was, um, a juicer or I guess I started off as a cashier at a juice place. Um, shout out juice land in Texas. Anyways. Don't they have them everywhere? They're an Austin based company. Oh, okay. And it's one guy that owns them all. Oh, good for him. I know. And he's so nice. One time he came in and he was like, Hey, and I was like, Oh my God, I have to make this man his smoothie. It was terrifying. Juice for everyone. Most terrifying moment of my life. Anyways. Um, so I was a cashier and one thing about me is I'm just like, the way that my friend Kat says it is I am just bad at things. Like, <laughs> like I'm good at things, but I'm bad at them yeah. at the same time. And I'm also just yeah, bad yeah. at things until I'm good at them. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also just a really awkward person in general. I just feel like funny, embarrassing things just happen to you. Right, naturally. they do. They do. And they kinda, sometimes... You're kind of like Hunter in that way. My life is just kind of unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, minus two, and I think that's why we're friends. You know what? You're right. You're right. Um, but anyways, I was working. I was, like, being trained, kind of, like, I was still relatively new. Oh, okay. Um, at, like, one of the locations that, like, wasn't my location. So I was already kind of in, oh, like, a... you were already out of it. I was already kind of in a weird location, or, like, headspace, you know? Like, yeah. I was already, like, ah, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I was being the person that was running the drinks from the juicers to the people that were waiting, because we were having a big rush, right? Yeah. And, um... There was a man that was writing down the names, and all I get is a cup that has the name printed on it, okay? That's all I know yeah. when I'm handed the drink. And I'm handed this drink. I turn around <laughs> to the crowd of people that's waiting their juices and their smoothies and whatnot, and I say, baby. <laughs> is that what it said? It said baby. Okay. It said baby Just on the cup. Just clarifying for everyone listening. <laughs> I, I, did, I did announce baby to the crowd. Immediate silence. Everyone's like, the, cash, the cashier sprints over to me he says no no they have a baby i said what <laughs> i look out at the crowd and suddenly i notice there's a couple with a baby the woman pelting daggers into me <laughs> because she thought that i was calling her husband baby or something i'm really not sure but anyways then i had why to would there be clarification on that i don't know and everyone was looking at me like well, it also was why am i sitting fault. like this <laughs> 
not really sure. Your arm is turned all the way outward. I'm going to sit normally now. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was one of the most humiliating moments of my life. I love that story, but you have to tell the other story that I wanted you to tell. Okay. You can bleep out the name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't, I honestly wonder if it's even something that she remembers. Oh, doubt, doubtful. Or if it was just something so humiliating for me because I don't, it erupted from somewhere What if she does me? remember it and she thinks about it as much as you do? And then she listens to this and she's like, oh my God. <laughs> I think about that too. Okay, go. Um, okay, so <clears throat> there was there's this there's this girl. We were friends, like really good friends when we were little. Grew up together, but we weren't as close in high school, and um, we hadn't like talked to each other in a while. Um, we just ran in different circles. And one day, I was late to class, and like <laughs> this 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 class was like in like a deserted part of my school. It's kind of underground. Um, there was no ground. <laughs> Yeah, it was like in a, in a basement situation. Okay. And there was just, it was deserted, right? Because I was late yeah, and yeah. it was just in a random part of school. Miss Tardy. Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I was busy. I was booked and busy in high school. Anyways. Wait, did you get tardies a lot? No, actually. Oh, okay. I was never punished for being late. I never my got teachers, tardies either. My teachers loved me. Of course. <laughs> Um, but anyways, I was walking down this hallway and all of a sudden my friend Gabby appears from around the corner and I just, I just wasn't expecting to see okay. anyone. <laughs> like I just, I thought I was minding my business. I was on my phone. Yeah. And also, as I mentioned in the first episode, I am terrible with passing interactions. Yeah. Literally my oh, yeah. worst nightmare. And so I look up for my phone and she goes, Oh, Hey Michaela, how are you? And instead of a normal response, what erupts from me is, what's up? <laughs> Which, I want to know <laughs> why, first of all. What's that? <laughs> Second like, of why? all. Yeah. Second of all, why? <laughs> and um, third of all, why? Um, I'll never understand. That's my favorite story She of didn't even respond. She was just like, and we just passed. <laughs> there was no time for any kind of further interaction. And since Mick has told me the story, I did get a shirt that said that. <laughs> From Depop. <laughs> Like, it just came up, and I was like, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to get the shirt. I, it happened, and immediately I texted all my friends. I said, you're never going to believe what I just did. I, I can't believe. What's up? I, I can't believe what just came out of my mouth. I'll never Say it, it down. one more time. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> okay. My, you're my time for a question. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I have a question for you. Okay. Okay, what was your quarantine guilty pleasure? Oh, Chick-fil-A. Oh, girl. Oh, Chick-fil-A. <laughs> I lived literally 0.3 seconds from a Chick-fil-A. Every day I got a text from Colin, I'm getting chick. Well, like, okay, <laughs> rush, at this time restaurants were closed. Like, restaurants like, right. were closed, closed for, like, what, the first, like, two, three months? And no so, longer than that, yeah. Uh, well, I guess I, the first time I went to a restaurant was in... <coughs> the first time I went to a restaurant was in June. And so, mm-hmm. probably, like, three, a little more than three months. Um, and so, like, it was always, like, a drive through or, or what? Yeah, you or know? what? Wait, yeah, like, literally, or what? Because I eat out so much yeah. that, like... Me cooking wasn't a thing. Right. And so Chick-fil-A every single day. That was my guilty pleasure. Mm-hmm. Chick-fil-A said, ah, I was more nuggets. And then I would put the nuggets in the fridge, wait for them to get cold, and then I would oh, eat them. Oh, Colin eats his Chick-fil-A cold. In fact, Colin eats most fast food cold. No, just chicken related thing. Chick-fil-A, Cane's. I'll never understand Actually, the those Cane's. are the only two. Cane's, when it gets cold, gets soggy. Yeah, but it's so good soggy. That's disgusting. But, like, I would never even eat, like... A burger cold, or like even McDonald's nuggets cold. Like that's really gross. interesting. Like I'll eat them like lukewarm, because, <laughs> but like I don't want McDonald's cold nuggets. But like Chick Fil A's nuggets, I trust. He fully takes the Chick Fil A chicken sandwiches out of the bag sometimes and sticks them in the fr- the freezer. I mean, temporarily. like, and what about it? Explain it. I'll never understand. I just, something about something about it cold. It's just like you know when you order like a Chick Fil A platter for like people, mm-hmm. like you're, you're having some event, and you order a Chick Fil A platter, and like it sits out for for a while. You already had some. But then you go back after later and they're a little cold and you eat some. That's, that's, that's the that's moment I live for. That's what hits for you? That's the moment I live for. I, I want them piping hot or nothing. Nope. I don't like, like hot food. Just, Ulcers? No. What, how do you like your pizza? Do you like it cold or hot? Uh, medium. I don't like cold pizza though. I don't oh, like cold. you don't like cold No, pizza. I don't like cold pizza, but I also don't like really hot pizza because then the cheese just melts. Like I want, it's kind I, of want fair. I want to be able to bite through the cheese. Okay. So you kind of want it to be like a... A congealed. A I want it to be congealed for sure. <laughs> Give me congealed yeah! pizza. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. My turn. I, I know the questions. I don't I'm even have to look at my phone. Okay, what is your biggest pet peeve? Oh, uh, see, I don't really have an answer for this one. Dog trusts humans? Sorry, come again? <laughs> it's from friends. <laughs> um, what is my biggest pet peeve? 
You have to have a pet peeve. I have. I can list a million of mine. Oh, I can list a million of yours right now. <laughs> but I can name them one, two, three, all on no, one yeah. hand. Actually, no. I would need probably five no, hands being, to name all your pet peeves. Being on your phone during a movie. People Last chewing. Minute. People walking slow. People talking loud. Mm-hmm. Anything loud. <laughs> Anything loud. But what are mine? I don't know. I used to have an answer for this. You have to have something that like bothers you when people do it. Like me. Now I'm trying to answer your your question. Can you think of something that bothers? I'm trying to think now. But like honestly, you're such a laid back person. Laid back person that like. I don't get irritated easily. No, you don't. But like, there's definitely something that bothers you. You know what it is? What? When people spell your name wrong. <laughs> that that is what. And you know what? <laughs> I feel like that happens to you a lot. It really does. You know, you know when it just happened to me? <laughs> when I was given my first on, on-screen credit for the show I've been working on? Yep. yep. There's two N's in my last name. So how would you pronounce it? Michaela? Oh, with, Chicani. With two N's. With two N's. Canny. Which is honestly Chicani. what I originally thought it was. Michaela. I always get Chicani. Wait, what is it? Chicani. I don't even remember what I used to call you. Shukani? Shukani. People go with go, people go Shukani all the time. I thought it was Michaela Shukani for the longest time. <laughs> well, I thought it, yours was Viator, so... Ah! <laughs> Hunter used to call you Michaela Shukini, like, all the time. Like, he, No, you know, truly, like, everyone, until people ask how to pronounce my last name, they, they mispronounce it. Okay, this is, I'm such, a, this is such a sidebar. I'm scared. But I'm so scared. Hunter sent me this TikTok earlier. I'm scared. About, like, there's, like, people in your life that, like, you meet once, like, you and your friend, like, let's say me and you meet. I sent you this TikTok. Yes. Me and you, like, meet someone once, and, like, they're in our lives forever. Yes. But they are actually, like, we never see them again. Or maybe we see them. And they're just like, they're just always there. It's but a like recurring have, side character. We have no relation to them. Right. Like, there's this one guy that me and Hunter know from, I went to high school with him. Uh-huh. I hope he doesn't. That's <laughs> why would he? <laughs> I went to high school with him. And then he worked at the summer camp with us. And then he went to call, like, A&M. Mm-hmm. And then the other day, I was, I just ran, I have this random girl. I don't even, I barely even know this girl. I have her on Snapchat. Why am I still on Snapchat? I don't know. Good question. Um, <laughs> but she posted him on her Snapchat story. And oh I was like, God. what is this connection? <laughs> but anyway, I feel like you used to be that connect. Like, you used to be the person that me the and talk about. <laughs> Michaela Shikani. Not that. We have a lot of those in this apartment building. Oh, we do. Which, the window's open, so we maybe shouldn't. <laughs> I love having little side characters that come, come through my life. Yeah. And it's like, we, for a lot of like them. Like, I saw the guy with the dog that I talked about last week. And the breakup girl. Oh, yeah. Did we talk about her? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Should we? No. But I did see the guy with the dog this morning. Love and I him. Said, hey. His energy is so good. He is. I, okay. hope he, I hope he's doing better. <laughs> Me too. Last last week he wasn't doing good, but he wasn't. You know what? He was on a morning walk this morning, so I feel like the he was expelling was the dark energy. <laughs> he was just, expelling it. Yeah, for sure. Okay. <laughs> Ask me a question. Okay. Next I hope question. I have an answer for you. Ooh, okay. This one might be something you have to think about for a okay, second. Okay, because the first question I knew what it was going to be, so I already had an answer, <laughs> y'all. But this one, I, I'm i so bad with answering stuff on oh, the spot. I mean, did you see? I just couldn't come up with a single No, catch me in a peeve. job interview. No. No. Ew, what was that? I don't know. It sounded like it came from deep. Well, I was trying to gag, but like it more came out as like a hiccup gag. I don't know. Anyways. I'm terrible in it. I Like, literally ask me a question. I can't tell you anything about myself. Like, my, my school... Okay, my school interviews went well, but I think it's like... I'm talking about, like, the industry and film. Mm-hmm. But, like, any other job interview I've had, it's always... Bah, 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 bah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm stuttering over every single word. I can't think of answers. Like, yeah. What's something, just anything, that you wish you could relive for the first time? It doesn't have to be profound. Okay, I know what it is. Oh, what? Are you ready for this? Oh, yeah. Okay, wait. Actually, guess what it is. Watching you for it, season one for the first time. No, but close. <laughs> Were watching, you going to say Little Women? Watching <laughs> that was my first thought! Wa- oh, I should have said that! Watching Little Women in theaters Damn for the it, first I time. Damn it, I knew you were going to say that! I don't know why I didn't say that! Because, like, uh. something about that, like, watching that movie for the first time made me so warm. It's such a good movie. It is such a hug. It is. It's a warm <laughs> hug! And you know me what? Me in I, the theater, subbing. Like, anytime I watch it, like, I still get that feeling, but it's like... It'll it's never like, be it's the It's like same. the first time you got drunk, like... Yeah. Like, nothing will ever be that. Nothing will ever be that. And, like, I've been searching for that feeling in a movie <laughs> ever since. And, One day you'll find it. And you're right. You will. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but Little Women 2019, directed by Greta Gerwig, featuring Saoirse Ronan, Florence Pugh, Timothy Chalamet, Laura Dern, Meryl Streep, Emma, the Queen Watson. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, is such a good movie. Genuinely. It became my entire personality for at least, oh, like, a couple oh, months after like, I watched it. I, the ta- oh, wait. No, just kidding. I don't have a tattoo from that. <laughs> the tattoo I have is from Jojo Rabbit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, actually, it's from a poem. Anyways. Um, but like, I feel like I could get a little woman tattoo. Oh, 100%. Wait, do you want to get one? Yes, let's do what it. What did we get? Quote? I was about to say, I'm so lonely, but that's not a good one. You know what? <laughs> Wait, should we get women? Women! 
in. Yes. <laughs> yep. mm-hmm. That's that's the one. Okay, but yeah, that that that's my answer. Okay, that's that's a, that's a good I one. I I can't. I that was literally my guess. I should have said it. I'm oh, so mad. Have. This is actually this one's kind of easy because actually, do I know the answer? Yeah, I know the answer. But I want to know. I guess the background behind it. Okay. What is your favorite song and why? Okay, I don't really have a why. The thing is. Well, you have to give me a why. Okay. I, I I struggle to pick my favorites of things, like, because I'm, like I said in the first thing. You're ever-changing. Sort of, I'm ever-changing, but also, like. If, You're a mirror ball. I'm a mirror ball. <laughs> ah! Like, there's always, like, things, like, even if I'm, like, this is my favorite thing, I'm always, like, but this is good in this way. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's so hard for me to, like, like, there's a Taylor Swift song sorter for all of her songs in her catalog. Mm, yep. Colin finished it in maybe 30 minutes. I'm just decisive like it that. It took me four hours. <laughs> it may be. I mean, I, that might be an exaggeration. Well, also, the but... thing about this question, I feel like, is that if you asked me this question, like, last month, I'd probably have a different answer. Yeah. Because, but... like, my music taste is, like, me listening to a song on repeat for a month and then it and then mm-hmm. the next the next song. Mm-hmm. So well, I can see why you would have complications. Yes. At the moment, the song that I've been like pulling up and playing is the new Wallows song. Oh, um, at the end of the day? At the end of the day. Oh, it's so good. I really, really it's like it. It's giving an 80 cent. Absolutely. And I love an 80 cent No, you moment. do. You really do. Um, But I think, like, I have two songs that are literally, like, up there at the very top that okay. are, like, my two favorites, I yeah. think. And it's Wake Me by Bleachers. I, I, knew, well, I knew that. And Mirror Ball by Taylor I Swift. also knew that. Um, For different reasons, I feel like. Wake Me just feels, like, so specific. Like, there's... My grandparents had a lake house yeah. um, that we sold, like, last year. But, like, being there was such a specific feeling. And it was, like, summertime, sunset, cicadas, you know. Oh, I love a cicada moment. You know what I mean? Like, like maybe... Give me like, the cicadas. I know. I miss cicadas. And so, for some reason, that song feels like that to yeah. me. And that's, like, my all-time favorite feeling. I have, I have, like, a playlist specifically for that feeling. Like... Drop the playlist. You know what? I just might have to. But so that's why I love that song. And I love like playing it, like driving at sunset. Like yeah. it's such a vibe. Um, and I love Jack, obviously. Of course. Jack Antonoff, the king of production. Of all music. <laughs> of all music, truly. And then Mirabal, I relate to the message. I'm a Mirabal girly you and are. I love Miss Swift. So, Understandable. Yeah. I kind of figured that would be your answer. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Last question. I have for a question me. for you. Okay. That'll be good. Hi, baby. Uh, okay, ready? I hope people don't think you were saying that to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to the cat. <laughs> anything, but a, anything but a baby moment, Kit. He's going to knock the camera over. Yeah, Kit, stop. Kit! Kit, Kit. <laughs> come here, baby. Again, she's not talking to me. <laughs> come here. Because for some reason, anytime a boy and a girl are friends, they're dating. They're dating. They're dating. But we're just I roommates, I did mofos. already, in fact, receive a message asking if we were dating. <laughs> like... <laughs> The amount of times I've dealt with that in my entire life, I'm like, no, literally. get over it. Yeah. Like, it's not that deep. I feel like it'll happen for the rest of my life. Oh, I mean, I told one of my mom's friends recently, I was like, my roommate, blah, 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 he, and they were like, he, and I was like, literally, <laughs> no. Um, roommate. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> third question hit me. Okay. What's your favorite book? Ah. Uh, <laughs> and you know what? I know what you're going to have to say about this. <laughs> But the thing is, like, I don't even, I, I can't even really, like, I can say it, but it's not, I'm not, it's not an inform, informed opinion because I actually don't know what I'm talking about because I've never read the book. Yeah. My so. favorite book is The Catcher in the Rye. Tell the people why. Because I relate to the main character. <laughs> and you know what the internet tells me? That that is a red flag. And you know a what? A red flag. I am a walking red flag. He truly according is. According to Michaela. Sometimes I'll tell him that something is a red flag. And, he and then proceeds. I adopt it into my personality. I told him that I saw on the internet. I've never read anything by Ayn Rand, so don't quote me on this. But the internet has told me that Ayn Rand is also a red flag author. Guess what book um, I bought. <laughs> immediately he, he fled to the bookstore to purchase an Ayn Rand bo- a book. And I did. And he did. And it's on his bookshelf. <laughs> so. I just like some, for some reason, I'm attracted to things like that. Like, like controversial I, things? Not controversial. Maybe it's just like... Like inter- edgy things. Interesting. I want to be interesting. I'm a four. But I feel like a red flag isn't the kind of interesting you want to be. But like a green flag is giving no spice, like boring. I mean, that's such an interesting take. <laughs> that's just how I feel. That's like, how, that's just how I feel. You're scary. That, that's how I market myself. <laughs> You're so scary. Ah. What goes on in that head of yours? A lot. <laughs> No, okay, but I actually don't know how to critique the the Catcher in the Rye. Well, you should read it, and then we can talk about it, yeah, and you we'll can actually get me if you think it's actually red flag or not. Okay, I will. I will. I will. I have. I, I, I for the first month we lived here, I put the book on her bedside table, thinking she would read it. Did I? No. no. The thing about Mick is, anytime I tell her to do something, she won't. You're right. There's so many movies. <laughs> 
that I try to get her to watch that she won't watch. I have watched more of your movie recommendations than you have watched of okay. mine. But there's something about me that, that you know, mm-hmm. that I won't do something or watch something if I don't want to do it. Yeah. Does that Colin make does me, not do things he doesn't want to do. <laughs> does that make me slightly selfish? Yes, I'm, <laughs> self, I'm self-aware of that. You are self-aware of that. Um, it's an important first step. <laughs> it is, self-awareness. <laughs> But that's, that's just me. Right. I, I don't want to devote five seasons of a show to something I don't like. Sure. That's why I won't watch... Vampire Diaries? Or Stranger Things. No, you said you'd watch Stranger Things. You even proposed it yourself in the podcast. You were like, do we watch Wait, it? did I say that in the yes! recorded podcast? Yes, oh my God, I'm did. gaslighting you. <laughs> I literally I literally have it Girl boss recorded. Gaslight. <laughs> yes, we, oh, we have a revision. I'm, I think I'm. I think I'm girl boss. I think I'm more girl, girl boss than gatekeep. I think because you're influenced by Taylor Swift, you're girl boss. That's kind of tragic, but yes. <laughs> like for some reason, that's the reason why in my yeah. head. Yeah, and that's valid. I'm still I gaslight. Think, no, think, no updates on that. <laughs> no, literally. I think the only reason that I said gatekeep the first time is because Colin is what brings the gatekeep out. Yeah, in me. for sure. So we get we get kind of competitive with each other sometimes. No, we kind of do. <laughs> but you know what? It's kind of good. It's good. We bring out the spice. No, we do. Well, like I feel like we push each other in such a way. Yeah. I think you're right. I think because, you're because there's some people when I hang out with them, I don't I don't feel pushed. I don't feel challenged. Do you I challenge, challenge you? You challenge oh me. God, you challenge me. Well, I he, feel like, well, he tries to get me to write and I haven't written a single word. Since I feel like the old. arguments we have are like, like they're just, like we're challenging each other's opinions and yeah. whatnot and like we grow from them. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> but you do need to write. Yeah, I do. If you want to consider yourself a writer. I haven't claimed to be a writer in months <laughs> after <laughs> the first short film I worked on. Because like I, I, I still, I have never, I've realized on the podcast I've never even said what I'm doing here. I moved oh, yeah. out here to get into the film industry, and I really think I would like to be a screenwriter or just a writer in general. I'd love to write a book yeah. someday. I love to write; it's so fun. But for some reason, does when she I write? Have, no. When I have free time, I refuse to write. She won't write. Um, I will not write. Will I write essays for people? Yes. <laughs> will I write? Shout out, Tori. Shout out, Tori. <laughs> will I write creatively? No. The thing is, um, you're creative. Like I don't understand I what the 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 what's blocking you from that. Well, it's fear of failure. Um, for sure. Uh, (laughs) See, for me, it's the opposite. Like, I can just write and, like, be done with it. And not, like, revise everything. I think for me, because I came out here saying, like, everyone was like, well, what do you want to do ultimately? Because I I came out here to be, like, a production assistant. Just, like, work on stuff because I knew that's how you get your foot in the door. But every time someone would be like, what do you want to do ultimately? Obviously, I have an idea that ultimately I'd like to write. I'd like to be a writer. But then the next question that follows is, oh, well, what have you written? Nothing. Nothing. I wrote one short film in college. And I did write creatively on Wattpad in, in my count. early Doesn't days. You can't put it on the resume, Queens. I literally, the first short film I worked on, um, I, my producer was driving me somewhere one day and she was like, we were talking about me moving out there, moving out here and all that stuff. And she was like, she was like, so what do you want to do? And I was like, well, I want to be a writer. I think I want to be a writer. And she was like, do you have anything I can read? And I was like, yeah. uh, I have like some stuff. Cause I have like some stuff from like my past yeah. that's just not good to show anyone and then I have the one short film that I feel like is not enough to show yeah. someone and she turned to me and she said you're not a writer if you don't write that stuck with you so have I written anything since then no <laughs> that was over six months ago Queenie yes it was yes it was <laughs> if, it, if it turns a year and you still haven't written anything I mean I'm still not claiming to be a writer I'm not gonna claim to be a writer until I've written something really I changed my title on Instagram to DJ I changed <laughs> <laughs> Literally what? <laughs> I didn't notice. I'd be this. making playlists, so. I mean, I guess I changed mine to writer. I did see that. Because <laughs> I'm a writer. See that? I did see that. Yes. Because I've written a full last screenplay at this point. He in my has. Life. He wrote it in one day. I wrote it in one day because I was alone here on Christmas because of COVID. Uh huh. So I sat down and I wrote my screenplay. Mm-hmm, did I watch did. Little Women during it? Yes. I don't understand how you can multitask like okay, that. Okay. Well, I started by like mm-hmm. like I woke up earlier, and I like watched started Little Women while I was eating breakfast, and then I started writing. And, like, there'd be moments when I'd, like, look over and watch, but I, like, wasn't, like, paying attention, paying mm, attention. It was just, like, background noise. Yeah, but, like, w- I watched Little Women, Lady Bird, and then The Duff. Classic. And, like, I, like, was, like, back and forth through all of those. Uh-huh. But then I put on New Year's Eve, and I didn't watch a single minute of it. And, and why and would you? Know, you? And literally, and why would I? Is that the one with Ashton Kutcher? I don't even know. No, that's Valentine's Day, and that okay. one's worse. Well, have you seen Mother's Day? No. Oh my god, you should see Mother's Day. It has Jennifer Aniston in it, doesn't it's it? It's worse, but like Jennifer Aniston. Right, of course. Did we talk about her last week? I feel like we talked about Jennifer no, Aniston. No, no, we didn't. We didn't. Okay. I just feel like she's a topic. <laughs> she's a queen. Um, I kind of want to get I kind of want to get deep for a second. Okay. And talk about like it was your birthday this past weekend. Yes. And so, 
for me, I hate birthdays. Mm -hmm. I hate my own birthday. It's always a letdown. I like celebrating other people's birthdays and going to birthday parties. Invite me to your birthday parties. But, like, I hate my own birthday. And I just have this weird thing with growing up. And so I just want to hear what your thoughts were on your birthday and how you feel about turning 23 and accomplishing nothing. Well, it's weird because... (laughs) Thank you for that. (laughs) (laughs) Because, I mean, I haven't accomplished anything either. And, like... I feel like I should have already accomplished, like, I should already have my Oscars. Oh, no, we should already be accepted. We should be delivering our Oscars acceptance speeches by this point. No, like, that's, like, that's my fear right now is that I'm going to turn, what, like, 29 and still not have my Oscars. But I feel like success is, like, so... Okay, well, first let me answer the first question because I was, I would, I will say this birthday was not a letdown. I, no, it was good. I, it, it was, was a good It weekend. was really good. I had a lot of fun. I wish... That I hadn't spit out of the car. Mm, not the rain. <laughs> on Saturday night. But other than that, it was really, really fun. It was, like, like really, really cool to have, like, my friends here. And it was really fun. And we did, like, a lot of fun things. And even though it didn't go, like, exactly to plan, it was still, like, really fun. Yeah. Um, but, like, I don't know. Like, with birthdays, there's always, like, such high expectations that you impose yourself. Because, like, you want to feel special and like this is a really special day but i feel like it's important to remind yourself it's just any other day yeah like it's a milestone but it doesn't have to be like this crazy insane like most i feel like most years i cry on my birthday just because like i have like i have this weird thing about getting older and i have this weird thing about like wanting my birthday to be like amazing and it's not always that you know but like this year i think because like i was like surrounded by people the whole time i just was like i was just happy the whole time you know but I will say, as soon as they left on Sunday afternoon, I went into my room and I, I turned on all my ambient lighting and I was laying in my Nothing bed just staring lighting. at the ceiling and I was like, so this is what it is to be an adult. Seeing like your best friends for like two days, maybe no, yeah. three times a year. I haven't seen like Hunter and Ben since like New Year's and I, pr- I won't see them for like another month or two. Yeah. Like... Being, I mean, like, you turn 23, which means you're out of the 18 to 22-year-old college bracket. Like, you're into the adult bracket. Yeah. For one more month, I'm still in the, I'm still in the the college bracket. You're still the baby. Like, I'm going to be living it up for the next month. As you should. Take advantage. (laughs) Take full advantage. Because once I turn 23 and I have to click that button that says 23 to 35, panic. And the thing is, like, I know 23 is not old. Like, I know we still have our entire lives, but it just feels very overwhelming. I think it's just also, like, the internet makes us feel like we have to accomplish things immediately in life. Yeah. Like, like everyone is obsessed with this thing of, like, immediate gratification. Yeah. Like, like, you don't just, you don't get that, especially in the industry, like, we're going into, like... You have to put in the work. And, like, I'm, I'm, like... For me, I'm scared that it's going to take until, like, I'm 40 to, to get that kind of success. But the thing is, like, if you think about it, and I don't, don't quote me on his age because I'm not sure, but, like, um, Steve Carell didn't have any kind of oh, success yeah, with I his career that. until he was, like, in his 40s. Yeah. Like, he didn't get his big break until, until he was in his 40s, but he has an amazing career. Yeah. Like, there's no timeline for when you're, like, when you yeah, have yeah. to make it by, like, by any means. So, I just think it's overwhelming when, like... Like, when I was, this is less to do with my birthday and more to do with just, like, moving to do something big and, like, wanting to be successful. Like, when I was, when I told everyone I'd made the decision and I was moving out here, like, moving away from home right after graduation, everyone was talking to me like it was, like, you're going to do amazing things. Like, you're going to be so successful. Your life's going to be so cool. And, like, I knew that that wasn't going to be the case. But still, like, people saying that to me, I'm like, they're right. Like, Like, me moving here is going to be something. And then it's just like any other place. Yeah. It's... It's just, like, there's more opportunity here, but I got here, and obviously, I still have to work my way up. Completely. You know? So, I don't know. It's just, like, turning a year older is just, like, kind of a reminder of, like, where you're at and, like, what your life yeah. is. And it makes you, like, any kind of milestone like that makes you assess, like, where you're at. You're at. And so, it's just yeah. weird. And also, after any event, there's, like, post-event de- depression. Yeah. Like, my friends left, and I was sitting in bed, like, hmm. And that's why I think when we tried to record the podcast yesterday, it was... It was bad. Tragedy. Was, we were down bad. We were down. We were down in the dumps and we were Ugh. trying to be funny anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Not looking forward to me being 23 in a month. I'll be listening to Getting Older by Billie Eilish on repeat probably. As you should. As you um, should. But yeah, I think that like kind of, that we, we did our weekend debrief. We you know? did. We're in a lot better mood today. Spirits are up. Spirits are up. And I'm looking like 
forward to us having some guests on here. Yes. Um, my friend Josh said he might be on here. Maybe we'll talk. We'll talk the film industry, acting, mm-hmm. whatnot. He's an um, actor. We'll get my friend Marco on here. We'll talk pop culture, Rita Ora, whatnot. Um, sure, of course. <laughs> um, I'm just I'm in a lot better mood after recording this today than yeah. I was after when we finished yesterday. We wanted to die yesterday. We were in the trenches. We were we were we were fighting for our lives. We were also scared. The headphones draining. Anyways, okay. anyways, we finished at like 10:45, and I was like, you know what? I need a lime pop. <laughs> And so we ran to Vons and got got two boxes. She dropped me off. I ran into Vons. I got two boxes of lime pops. We came home, watched one episode of Miss Annalise Keating, and then went to bed. Mm-hmm. And just today, I feel so much better. I feel rejuved. Like, I was down bad back in January for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, bad headspace. Mm-hmm. Like, how you were in your in, November times. Yeah, like the last, like the four months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like both, like, we're both actually... We're dare, settling. Dare I say happy? We're settling. We're like we're settling in. We're happy. We're vibing. It's it's things are looking up. Things are looking up. Things are looking up. And it's it's good. Anyways, um, I would like to remind you that we do have an email if you want to send us anything you'd like us to talk about yeah. on the any next email, episode. Any, any email. Any email. <laughs> any questions, any suggestions. Any stories you'd like us to recount or or <laughs> critique, maybe. Yeah, you know, sure. we can do that. We love the feedback. You we, know what? We'll read some feedback we, like we did yes. this week. Please give us some feedback. Let us know what we need to fix. If I'm still screaming, I am so sorry. I think I was the one screaming this time. <laughs> Anything with that. We'll fix it. We will fix it at some point. Yep. We're, we're figuring it out, y'all. We're really trying. We're in between. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, leave us um, a rating if you're listening on Spotify. Yeah. Give us a follow. Maybe we'll be on Apple Music soon. I'm working on it. I, I, think, I'll, I think I'll have it up, okay. and, up and running this week. And I think that's it. Okay. Signing off? Signing off. (laughs) (laughs) See you next time. See ya.